Good morning, everybody. And welcome to our carol service here in Strain. It's lovely to see so many people here this morning. Great to have you all out, and also great that we are live online as well. So as we gather together this morning, as we worship, as we have our carol service, we just ask that God would be with us and would bless us, and that we would know his peace uh, this morning. Um, I have a few announcements just to run through this morning, so if you can bear with me, please just like do those. Um, we have our normal uh, weekly announcements, which will be emailed out tomorrow from the office. In addition to that, we have a series of prayer points, which Alan has very kindly put together for us in relation to the current situation with COVID. Um, if you'd like those prayer points, if you don't normally get them, but you'd like them, please contact Barbara and she will um, send them on to you. I'll also get them put up onto Facebook and hopefully onto the website as well. It's just black care and concern for one another um, today of all days at our carol service. Just a little reminder as well, folks, as we come and go, just because of the changing situation, um, we've been asked again just to remind folks just to be very careful of how we come and go. Remember to give each other um, distance. Uh, if you're able to wear your face mask, make sure you've got your face mask on unless you're at all times. We do have our water in operation through the building and out. Uh, so if you do want to have a chat, please feel free to get outside uh, and chat out there where it's, it's, it's safer to do so. And whenever you do come in, please just remember, just take your seat and stay there, just uh, so we're not moving around too much, just so we can keep everyone as safe as possible. A couple of good announcements to do now. So who had fun doing the fireside quiz? Who managed to get all the answers? Who spotted the spelling mistake? Yeah, well done. Well, I, I take great pleasure in announcing that the draw took place for the winners. And I, I, I did see it happening by video, so I know it was done fairly. Uh, and I had, for, So for the adults, the winner was um, Alan Gwynn. So congratulations to Alan. And for the children, it was Lexi, Rachel, and Joe Brown. So well done. <laughs> Joe, make sure you see Lynn afterwards and get your prize, okay? Um, Talking of things to give out, if any of the children are here this morning that weren't at Sunday school last week, make sure you see uh, Joanne afterwards. She does have some gifts to give out still as well. Uh, so please see Joanne afterwards. I think apart from saying that, okay, so we're here today. So we have a carol service. So we're going to be slightly longer this morning, So, um, but we're going to have different things happening. So we've got traditional carols. You might see a few faces appearing on the screen this morning. And you'll be asked at times just to sit and listen to the words that come up. So we have our carol service on Christmas morning. We are back here again at 10.30 for our Christmas morning service. Get your Christmas jumpers out. And children, remember to bring a toy with you. The noisier, the better. Uh, it'd be great to see you all on Christmas morning if you can make it. The following day, the Sunday, we will not be here in person um, I will be putting a service up or putting a, a reflection up online at about 9 o'clock for the morning. So you can watch it there. And then the following Sunday after that, beginning of January, Jim Campbell is very kindly taking that all age service for us. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to announce this morning, except for I have a big long list of birthday blessings. So I'm going to try and cover all the birthdays that I've got between now and the end of the year, just so I don't miss anybody. So I have here in front of me, Amory McWaters, Anna Wilson, Darren McGacky, Alexandra Falloon, who'll be starting to drive the car this week. Congratulations. Alison Cosby, Jack Swan, David Gilliland, Max Merland, Eve Harris, and Wilson Rankin. I think that's everybody. Let's pause and let's pray. Oh, Jenny, Jenny, sorry, I forgot. I haven't got yours in front of me. Happy birthday as well. Let's pray. Father, it's so good. Uh, today of all days, as we come to our carol service, uh, on our build up to the coming of your son, Jesus, that we remember birthdays. Father, you have blessed each and every one of us, and we thank you for that. And we ask for your continued blessing upon us. Father, for Jenny, for Anne-Marie, for Anna and Darren, for Alexandra, for Alison, for Jack, for David, for Max, for Eve, for Wilson. 
continue to be with him and bless him, we pray. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Today is our fourth Sunday in Advent. The four candles are lit, I remember this morning. And we come to praise and to worship God through the reading of his words, through singing songs, through listening and reflecting. This morning we will listen to promises that God makes in the Bible and hear the story of the very first Christmas when Jesus was born. We will hear plumes, listen to songs and sing carols as we thank you to God for all that he has done for us. So let's begin as we hear of what happened so long ago. We listen to first reading from the Bible. Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The snake deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the snake, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Let us worship God as we sing the words of our first carol together. I'm going to invite you to stand and sing as we sing the words of Once in Royal David City.
Let us come and let us talk to God in prayer. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you that we are here in your name to sing carols, to listen to your words, to hear the promises that you have given to us over the years, the promises of a coming Savior. Lord, you are so good to us. You love us without measure. And for that, we are so grateful. Lord, as we gather, please still and settle our hearts. Help us to listen to your words. Help us to hear what it says. Lord, as we have brought our gifts this morning, we thank you for your blessing upon us that way. And we bring our gifts or offerings back to you again for you to use for your glory and honor. So, Lord, we ask that you would continue with us now, that we would hear you as we listen. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite Elaine to come forward and read our second lesson to us. Genesis chapter 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Listen, as Stephanie and Morris sing to us that well-known piece, Mary's Boy Child.
Let us hear a bit more about the promise of that Christmas day as Lewis brings us our third reading. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and verses 6 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a child is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Boys and girls, I need your help now as we sing along with the video, um, which we've done before here in church, uh, which you know, and we can help the adults as we sing it. So I'm going to ask you all to stand as we sing together, What a Glorious Night. came to see the baby stood by his mother's side here lay the savior inside a manger oh what a glorious night oh what a glorious night i hear the angels sing Let's hear about the prophecy of where all this would take place as joy brings us our fourth reading.
Micah chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will be to the ends of the earth. Our Sunday school children have a poem which you're going to hear now. It'll be on the screen, and along with the poem, there's a little bit of drama to go with. Christmas time is finally here. It only comes but once a year, and it's time to spread food to those we love and hold so dear. Christmas time is a time of glee, a time when peace and love binds, a time for those like me and you who sit beneath the Christmas tree. Christmas time is a time of joy, a time to sit back and enjoy it. A smile on each girl and boy as they play their Christmas toy. Christmas time is a time to share the passing off another year. Birth of Jesus, a joyful fair, to show loved ones how much we care. Christmas time is a time for song, a time for us to get along, to make us feel the Lord Jesus shone, forgive all those who did us wrong. Christmas time is a time to pray, put love and kindness on display, show compassion along the way, Christmas time should be every day. Jesus Christ is born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, son. This is full of Luke. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, And you will name him Jesus. And he will be very great. And he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. And he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy. And he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren. But she has conceived and now is in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything that you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Let's listen and reflect upon these words as we hear the carol, Silent Night.
Zara is going to come forward and read to us about the foretelling of that birth now from Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. 
All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Let us stand and sing the king as again through the video we sing Born is the King. Born unto us this day a Savior. Gifted from heaven to a manger. The hope of the world alive for all mankind. All of the earth rejoice, it's Christmas time. So lift up your voice and sing out his praise. It's Christmas, born as the king rejoices. All of the earth rejoice, it's Christmas time, it's Christmas time. So lift up your voice and sing out his praise, it's Christmas, born as the king rejoices. Let us hear now about a, about a real fright that first Christmas as Phil comes and reads to us about the shepherds. Now Luke 2, verses 8 to 16, shepherds and angels. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them. And the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger.
Let us together sing about that as we sing the carol Away in a Manger. For the first verse, we're going to listen as our Sunday school children sing it for us on the screen, and then we're going to join in from verse 2. Let's stand and let's watch this and then let's sing. Be seated. Dorothy is going to come and read to us our eighth lesson as we learn about the wise men. Matthew 2, verses 1 to 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, They saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I'm going to ask you again just to sit and listen to these words and reflect upon, again, another very well-known piece, the first Noel. to certain 
Let us hear more about that king as David brings to us our ninth lesson, taken from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. His light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory as of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace truth. Thank you, David. Thank you to everybody who took part in our service today. Everybody who, whether you sang, whether you played, whether you decorated the church, whether you were doing shooting or doing sound or to the, the boys and girls, to everyone who took part today, thank you so, so much. Because this is part of our tradition, isn't it, in church, to have our carol service. When you think of Christmas traditions, I wonder what happens in your house. I wonder, is there a certain film which you tend to watch every single Christmas? Is there that movie which you just love? And you settle down as a family, and you watch it, laugh at the same jokes time and time again. And you have a really good time. Maybe you're all dressed in your Christmas PJs. Or you've all got your Christmas jumpers on. Or maybe you've even got a set of 23 lights around your neck or something. I wonder what your Christmas tradition is. And then I wonder who's getting ready for this tradition. Who's getting ready to put out maybe a a cookie for Santa. Maybe some hot chocolates. Maybe a carrot for Rudolph. We all have our traditions, don't we? Church is full of traditions. This is a tradition. The tradition which I really love is the Advent wreath and how we light the candles and how then on Christmas Day our middle candle is lit for the coming of Jesus. And our candles quite often represent peace, love, hope and joy. Isn't Christmas all about the love? Isn't Christmas all about the love which God has poured out onto each and every one of us? His love which brought Jesus born as a baby in a manger for us. A baby promised so long ago in Genesis as we've heard. And right the way through the Bible it's all about a love story. How God loves us. But it's not about the sort of love which we quite often think about. 
God's love story is so, so much more than that. The phrase which has been used for it is sacrificial love. So let me put up on the screen this verse taken from John 15. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. God calls his, his friends. God calls us his children. God adopts us into his family through the sacrificial love of Jesus. That's what Christmas is all about. Jesus coming to be our sacrifice. Jesus coming to give up everything for us. It's easy to lose sight of that, isn't it? It's easy to, to think of just the presents or the tree or the turkey or the duck or whatever you'll have on Christmas Day. It's easy to think about that and to lose sight of God's love. My prayer, simply this Christmas, is that we see that love, that we realize that that love of God is for us, it is personal, and that we accept that love. And we let God's love come into our lives and transform us and change us. Because that's what Jesus did when he came to this earth. He changed and transformed everything. Because he came as our saviour. Will you see that love this Christmas? Let us pray. Dear God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that we do call you Father because of the sacrificial love of your son, Jesus. Father, you didn't hold back that love. You didn't hold back Jesus. You freely sent him. And he freely came and gave up everything in heaven that he had to be born into that so that we could have our relationship with you restored, so that we could have our sins forgiven. Father, thank you for the sacrificial love of Jesus. And this Christmas, Father, if we haven't already done so, may we let that love into our lives so that Christ can transform us. And Father, we want you to keep transforming us each and every day. So Lord, this day and always, thank you for that love. For it's in Christ's precious name that we pray. Amen. Kyle, can we put up the words of our closing carol of the first verse? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. We sing now about our king who came, our saviour. Let stand and let us worship God.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Folks, thank you so much for joining with us this morning as we've had our carol service. It's been lovely to see everybody here this morning. Um, If you can come back and join us on Christmas morning at 10.30, you'd be very welcome. Like I say, make sure you have your Christmas jumper on. Children, make sure you bring a nice noisy toy with you so everyone can see your toys. It'd be great. But if you can't, again, our service will be streamed on Christmas morning. So if you want to stay at home and watch it from there, you can do But uh, may you just have a a really peaceful and a quiet Christmas. May I pray that everyone would stay safe this Christmas. And let's continue to look after everyone this morning as we exit from the building. So again, as normal, as you come out, it's down and through the doors um, on either side of the pulpit here. uh, And the one-way system is in operation. If you want to pause outside and chat, please do so. Just remember to give each other that little bit of space. But may you know God's peace and blessing this Christmas. Merry Christmas.